Hi guys, today I'm going to talk to you about how to recognise and identify fractions. So some of you may think you only ever come across fractions in maths. However, I think we all come across fractions in our daily lives and I'll show you how. Fractions represent parts of a whole, it can even represent a whole. Today I'm going to introduce you to some key language for fractions. So, the number at the top represents the numerator number at the bottom represents the denominator and the line in between for those of you that, that like keywords is called a vinculum. The denominator represents how many parts there are in total. Let's have a look at some of our items. Here is a visual representation of how I would split things into fractions. So the number at the bottom represents the, what, the denominator. The denominator shows us how many parts there are in total. As you can see, I have two parts to the apple. I am now splitting that into half, therefore I have one out of the two. I now want to show you what a quarter looks like. A quarter means I have four parts in total. I have four yellow fell tips. One quarter of those would mean I take one out of the four. One quarter. Likewise, if I was doing a third, I would need three, I would have three parts in total of which I would need one. So I would cut this lovely juicy tomato into three equal parts. One third would be one out of the three. Here I have a carrot. I want to split this in half. A half. What does a half look like? Numerator is the one on top and the denominator is the two at the bottom. That means I need two parts, two equal parts. Half. How about this lovely courgette? Something the Americans called a zucchini. I need to split this into quarters. Quarters are four equal parts. Can you pause the video and tell me what is wrong with the parts I have cut this into? Now let's see if you managed to get that right. As you could see, the carrot was two equal parts. Unfortunately, the zucchini was not four equal parts. Therefore, not a good representation of a quarter. Hi, Norman. That pizza looks lovely. I'm really hungry. How many slices does that pizza have? It has one, two, three, four, five, six equal slices. So is that a denominator of six? Yes, it has six as the denominator. How many pieces would you like, Tim? I have two plates. Can I have two slices, please? Yes, sure. So you have had two out of the six slices. So as you can see, a half can be represented in lots of different shapes and forms. If I was to shade in a half, it would look very different on each of these shapes. But as you know from earlier on, as long as I have represented one out of a possible two in each form, it doesn't matter what the shape is. Okay, let's look at what the following fractions represent. I have one, two, three, four parts in total. So four is my denominator. I have one, two, three shaded. Therefore, my fraction is three quarters or three fourths. The next one, I have one, two, three, four, five, six in total. Therefore, my denominator is six. 
Notice how I always start with counting how many parts there are in total. How many do I have shaded here? I have one, two. Therefore, this re fraction represents two sixths. Those of you that are quite advanced in maths will know that the equivalent of this is one third, if you wish to write it like that. How many parts do I have here? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I have one, two, three, four, four, twelve as a fraction. Again, if you wanted to simplify that, this would be the same as one third. Just to finish off, who can identify what the mistake is with this? Hopefully you've all managed to identify the mistake. I have one, two, three, four, five parts in total. Therefore, the denominator is five. I have one part shaded, so the fraction should be one fifth, not one quarter. Hope you've enjoyed our introduction to identifying and recognising fractions. Maybe you can look out for fractions in your daily lives as well. Goodbye.